Hello everybody, I am FTA and welcome back to another issue of Sonic Says. And uh, today I'm joined by... Jono! I'm t -Bay. We are once again anti-Guardian Less. Uh, he's too busy doing insert unfunny thing here. Um, so we thought this, um, at the time of this recording, the IDW book is set to premiere officially... In just under two weeks. Um, this is the uh, weekend of... Was it WonderCon? Yes. Yes. And so technically the, the book is out. Well, the book has been handed out to patrons. and uh, No, they, they had to buy it. It was 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Yeah, it's a, it was a convention exclusive uh -oh. um, premiere edition. So you got to, you got to buy it a, a couple weeks earlier at the uh -oh. IDW booth. The only difference between it, the cover, is it's the Tracy Yardley cover. But it's black and white, except for Sonic. Right? Except for Sonic. Sonic's in color. The back is in a gray tone. Um, yeah, and I should be getting that on Tuesday. Nice. Yeah. Well, did you order it from them, or did you get? Did you know someone who went there? No, I bought it off eBay. It's already on eBay. Yeah. How much? There were pre-orders on eBay. Twenty-five. Oh. Okay. Damn, bud. Yeah, that's convention how exclusive. Uh, yeah, convention exclusive. I'd be like, if if it was like, if it was like, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, if it was like what Archie did, did an actual exclusive cover that that I get. This is just regular cover, but gray. But we're not talking about Archie, are we, Girth? Never again, Girth. Never again. Never again, Genome. There will be the Genome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're not talking about Archie. Uh, we we might. I think we thought in the future we might go back and start to do some of the. Archie arc we did haven't talked about. Maybe. I thought the plan was we'll go go through it like we're doing we're going to do with STC, but after STC. Yes, or maybe we'll do half of STC, do some Archie because okay. there's there's various points in STC where it's like okay, this is starting to get bad <laughs> for, for a little bit. Um, but yes, um, I'll well, go. So we'll trade bad for bad. Okay. Bad for bad. <laughs> Um, so I'll go, in terms of of Arch of IDW, sorry, we are going to wait until the entire first arc is out, and then we're going to do that as a um, as a episode, and then after that, uh, it you know depend you know people want us to just do an issue an episode and maybe wait a little bit until arcs are done. We can. I think what we are thinking about right now is that we'll wait until an arc is done, but in the meantime, we'll do STC. We'll do STC, yeah. yeah. Which, in, in that case, then, it might might be worthwhile to do STC and Old Archie at the same time, just so it's not just, like, three episodes of STC. Maybe we could do, like, STC, okay. Old Archie. Oh, no. Sound off in the comments um, what people would like. We also... Once, I've already done this. Once the first arc... That, that, that was, like, two years ago. I think <laughs> one, once the first arc is done... We're gonna start reaching out um, to some interviews because we the people we wanted with us before we knew they were doing work on the new book, so we thought might as well wait until that those issues right. are out so we have something more to talk about. So once that first arc is done, we're gonna be reaching out to do because we haven't done an interview. I would say we haven't done an interview in a while, but two episodes ago was our interview with Ian Flynn. So, but that was a while ago. That was a while ago in terms of the time. Yeah. So. Um, what we're going to do this episode, we actually have a, a handful of things to review. Uh, Jono has bought over in the... Do, 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 explain those books, where they came from and what they are. <clears throat> so, it's the Necronomicon Ex Mortis. It's the Book of the Dead. It's bound in human flesh and inked in blood. Sega edition. <laughs> Sega edition. It, so scre <laughs> it screams Sega as it takes your soul to another world. <laughs> Sega! Oh, it's the flesh of all the um, retired characters. But you, had to read, you had to read from it to get Mighty and Ray back in Mania. And now they're in. Yeah. <laughs> they, so David T. Lugger gave his soul so we could have Mighty, yeah. Mighty and Ray back. So, um, Takara... Oh, no, not Takara. Jeez. Just regular Tomy. Tomy. American Tomy. Because in Japan, it's Takara Tomy. But in America, it's just Tomy. So, Tomy... This is America. The, uh, the toy company has the license for Sonic the Hedgehog toys... They've been doing Sonic pack-in comics. For the last few, they've been doing uh, old Archie issues. They did uh, issue 25 and, uh, I think, Mecha Madness. But 
since Archie lost the license, and there's such a fuss about all the Archie content, they were like, they 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 had advertised that they were going to do a classic tales, modern tales with a tales issue and a Metal Sonic classic Metal Sonic with a Metal Sonic issue. But since Archie um, lost the license, they were like, I guess we can't really do that. I don't entirely know why. Well, because they don't get the license anymore. So but they, they could uh, remove the word Archie, and I would assume that they might be able to do that. I don't know. It's probably le- legally up in the air at this point. I, th- I think that would still... I, I think that <clears throat> would still involve... I'm not sure if... Actually, no, I'm not sure. I, I it depends. It, well, it depends legal, on the Some whole, legal nonsense probably involved with it. It, it. it either depends on whether or not IDW can publish Archie content or it, it just depends on content. I think I, I think they will do because they've done that for Turtles. Well they've working done that Archie. for G.I. Joe, Transformers. Well no like, but no but I mean I mean specifically working with Archie, they've done that with Turtles. Right. Because Turtles Archie used to publish the book slightly based on the cartoon show. Well and they even work with Archie to publish old school Archie. Like there's a Dan DiCarlo yeah, I think he does that. I think yeah. they also do that with um, Spider Man. They do yeah. that with like Spider Man. I think the newspaper. Well, they do stories. the newspaper stories. They do artist editions, mm. which are just like the artist pages of um, Marvel and DC books. Um, so I mean, anything's possible. I think it's more so the legal predicament that Archie has put themselves into yeah. regarding the comics and whether or not that'll. But we're, what we're really talking about are the comics that actually arrived with these packs. Before you get there, I want to... So if, if, say, there wasn't this issue, the problem with Archie, I will put good money on the Metal Sonic one being Universe 50. I would say so. The Tales one, for a single Tales issue, that may be like issue one of Tales, the Tales Adventure arc from Universe. Probably. I'm trying to think of like what good single Tales issue there would be. I bet... Metal Sonic definitely I would have to be well maybe 50 or 75 because it wasn't 75 also a Metal Sonic story I thought 75 was I can't remember it might 50, 50 was him fighting Shard Metal versus Shard yeah and then I think 75 right. was him against Sonic because I think I bought some of those pages weren't they, weren't they running through they were fighting in a volcano I think yeah and, well and Silver was there Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think either one of those would have worked good for um, this metal thing. But either way, well, what did we get instead? Uh, so instead we got <coughs> two comics, uh, one in, one titled Hero and one titled Rival. They're supposed to kind of connect, but they don't. Um, oh, the picture, yeah, that's... the picture is not... Is is can you please just move it? Is like cropped in a weird way. That is so terrible. I thought if you put it back, if you put it back to, uh, side to side, uh, you get a little little extra of um, metals. To, to sum it up, the, the rival side, which is on the right, is Metal Sonic in the foreground, Eggman in the far ground, and the whole of Metal is in frame. The hero side is Tails and Sonic. At the bottom corner, the bottom right corner of the rival side. You see the tip of Tails' tail, and on the the kind of middle left side of the hero side, you see Metal's hand. The problem is on their respective covers; those portions on the other issue are in frame. So if you put them together, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so I can't frame this because uh, it looks <laughs> terrible. But I bet uh, one one thing about Archie: they knew how to make a connect and collect cover. I'll give him that because yeah. I did that too many times for my liking but they, yeah but I so I believe these are just translations and for the first time released in the West probably the only time mm-hmm. which kind of makes me want to want to track these down because they ain't they're, right. they're fine but they're they're translations of so uh the Sonic website for Sonic Channel Sonic okay. Channel I think uh for the 25th anniversary uh, put out these little one to two page web comics. Why are you flipping me off, TJ? I was just, I wasn't you're like, oh, me. you're doing terribly. Uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> now he's upset with me. <laughs> so um, 
these were web comics, and now they're comic comics. And the translation, I think, is a little uh, it can be a little weird at times. I don't think all the humor translates over very well. I don't think that um, it might not have been that funny to begin with. <laughs> There because a, they're supposed to be one-page ga gag comics, but... There's a couple that, <laughs> that I could chalk up to the same level of humor as, Bear is driving! How can that be? <laughs> and then that's classic! <laughs> but there's a couple that aren't even funny. Right. Like, on no level are they funny. Like, the the shadow one is heartbreaking. <laughs> it is pretty sad. Um, it's entirely black and white. Mm -hmm. Well, black, right, white, and gray. There's no color, so... Already, from the last reprints they did, you're going down a step because mm -hmm. it's not colored. Um, and once again, they have the weird um, sewn spine. So instead of the two staples, like a typical comic book, it's sewn, mm. which I, I think is cool. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Um, any gag pages that stand out to you? Um... Well, let's, the, let's see, the hero one first. Which specifically looks at our heroes. Uh, but the two that stood out, well, three that stood out in the hero side is the Knuckles one is weird. <laughs> because the first half is like, it's him reflecting on his heritage. Like, I'm part of this tribe that died due to its own hubris. I'm the last of my kind. Oh, wait, three hit me on the head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up a tree. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what literally... kind of tonal shift is this, man? <laughs> and then he's sad at the end he sees, messing up the tree. And then he sees images of, of Takar, who disapproves, and her father, <laughs> Paco Makachan, who's like, good job, great-grandson, question mark. Um, there's one with sticks the badger. Interesting. Because yeah. Japan, Japan seems to love sticks. I like sticks. Because um, she's the only Boom character to get her own page on Sonic Channel. But with like the custom artwork they do. Right. Lo looks great. Mm -hmm. She was in the last Olympic game. Oh, yeah. Um, as a playable character. Mm -hmm. um, so people love sticks. So I wouldn't be surprised. I think this was brought up in the recent South by Southwest panel. It was asked to Izuka-san. It was like, you know, is there any chance of sticks coming over into a main series game? Which I would maybe not for like the next one because they might want right. to have some distance between boom, but I I would not be shocked if at some point within the next decade they just bring over sticks into the main series because I th I think she would fit in fine and um, they don't you know most of their female cast they don't use for right. a reason because uh, it's like Cream's too young so she I think I'm gonna on a fumble cast Ian Flynn was going through the characters like Cream's too young to fight. So I think now Sega don't like her being in like in in like violence hmm. situations because she's six or whatever. Blaze is on her altered dimension, so you have to explain why she has to be a reason why she's here. Although in forces, there's no reason why Silver's there, so who cares? And so Sticks could just be part of the team, like Rouge right. and Amy type of thing. Um, yeah, Sticks one was fine. And on the hero side, Shadows one. I'm not sure if it's canon, but on the Shadow side rival in the comic book, rival side, uh, apparently <clears throat> Maria is the one who named Shadow. She wants to call him as he says, like you know, um, Professor Joe's like, isn't that slightly villainous? She's like, no, shadows are a good thing. You need, you can't have darkness without the light, and sh and a shadow um, sh proves to you that there's light somewhere. Right. And then it goes from that to shadow just like contemplating on his bike, and then riding off into the moonlight. It's, I, it's a. I thought that was him sleeping because he's homeless. Oh. <laughs> Uh, no, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get to that in an upcoming book, but it's canon. Shadow has a home, but um, that one it's not funny. It's not funny, and you know it's not it's not the best written thing ever. But it's uh, that I think that was probably to me the most effective one because mm -hmm. like it, it it added something to his backstory, whether it's canon or not, and it was um, it was good. They didn't have Shadow do anything stupid or goofy. Right, I like no, the metal I mean... one. I, don't know, I, but, I just, I just love, just love a uh, Cubot in his uh, his fake costume. Sonic costume. He's like wearing the skin of Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> over his body. Oh, you want to go uh, do some running? I like the um, the Jet the Hawk one because yeah. it ends with Jack just saying "Shut your beak, toy." <laughs> that that kind of made me laugh. So is that is that something? 
because he he gets that treasure and he gives it away to everyone and then he leaves no money for himself and he has to borrow from Wave. He has to borrow like a quarter to get a can right. out of a vending machine. Is that something that's part of his character? In in the theme in the in the Babylon Rose theme song, <clears throat> Catch Me If You Can, there was a section of dialogue where it's there's things like not treasure, but there's there's a line, a line there's a lyric that says World domination, the best technology. I have no interest in these former glories. The theme song kind of implies that mm. all he cares about now is being the best at racing. I think mm. so, and and I think uh, like they, the Babylon Rogues, they're kind of uh, they're kind of villainous. They're not flat out evil. So like I I don't think you know I don't think, I don't think they steal from like the poor or whatever. So right. I think, but I think after meeting Sonic, just like I want to beat Sonic. With a stick. So, um, or bat, or bat. So yeah. So at this point, I guess you you could get these in Toys R Us, but that's gone the way of Archie. So I did. I did want to bring that up because Toys R Us is going, uh, bye bye. going out, and that's the only place I've ever seen Sonic, Sonic comic packs or well, Sonic, Sonic toys. Because I, I, I think Sonic I think they had an exclusive deal for Toys R Us. So. I um I had to buy these on eBay, mm-hmm. uh, since I don't think Toys R Us is going to get any new stock in, and my Toys R Us certainly didn't have any, and it's kind of sad because Toys R Us has had kind of a long history with Sonic comics. They used to sell them in packs of two to three issues, saran wrapped together. Oh, you got me. You bought one. Yeah, I brought. I have two, so I brought them. Um, like just discounted two packs. Um, they would be uh forty-eight page specials or a couple of the regular issues. Um, so they Toys R Us would have still do have a limited amount of comics that they sell. Um, I remember there being like spinner racks with those, mm. and they'd be like discounted. And I, I would assume Toys R Us was the first contact that people had with Sonic comics. Um, and then, of course, Jazzwares, those Sonic toys, that was the only place you could get those, and they had con- packing I think comics. I still, I think I have a two-pack of um, Genesis. I think I have a Genesis mm-hmm. one, and <clears throat> one other one. But yeah, I got, I mean, I, I have those issues anyway, so I have never felt a need to open those, but, because, like, you know, Jazzware weren't the best, but I, I prefer them to tell me. I, pers- I prefer the, I see. There was more variety of Jazzware. Right. It seems like a lot of, to go on a quick tangent, it seems like a lot of the Tommy stuff now, it just seems like uh, the same stuff that Jezreel was doing. Yeah. You know? Well, they, they, um, they, they're they doing the clear see-through toys. Those toys that, suck. Yeah. Um, I also, the pack in toys for these, um, not as posable, uh, Tails looks like he's missing you said. He looks like he's missing his, his like stomach slash crotch area. Right. Like he looks like a, like a grandpa pulling up his pants. It's like, so I'm, I'm not sure who legs. at both Tommy and Sega proved that model. Because it's terrible. Yeah, but I, um, but now with Tommy, the only place to get the, besides online, to get those Sonic comic packs was Toys R Us. So without Toys R Us, there's no place to do that, so... I just didn't they realize didn't they realize who they were affecting with this deal? right <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I mean I know people lost their jobs but we lost <laughs> we lost, lost the only, access to the Sonic. only outlet for Sonic comic packs <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why I wanted to bring it up because I'm just so sad about Sonic comic packs. Anything else? So we this is add where we want to announce that we're starting a letter campaign. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna write Sega and tell them that they need to get Sonic comic packs into into Meyer and 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 the Walmart and. But yeah, so um, if you know if you can find them, I think there's you can probably find those comics like the original ones online. There's probably mm-hmm. fan translations. Right. They're not the best things ever, but I think they're. They're decent. Cute. They're decent slash cute enough yeah. where they're not they're not terrible. They're, if you're if you're crazy like me, you want them. Yeah, if you're if you're an uh, avid collector, you'll want to get them in your. In because your I really think these are the only times they're going to be printed like this. 
I don't I don't foresee them ever being printed again. So. Yeah, I don't think they're really like. Yeah. They're all right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I like I said, I thought they were cute. Um, yeah, some of the gags are just kind of just like chuckle worthy, but hmm. Vector eating pudding and putting it in the freezer. Yeah, the he, uh, uh, Vector, teases that her day you ruined my favorite character. I was so I was, yeah, I was pretty pissed. The, I was like the gag of 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 Ashby getting hit by a tornado kind of made me. That was pretty out. funny. <laughs> he should be dead, um, but he's not. Also, so. that's terribly irresponsible of Tails to be flying the tornado so close to a, to a pole like that. You didn't want your stairs. Um, and so moving on from that then, we have also recently released, unrelated to Archie or IDW or any other comic brand or toy line, three children's books were released. We have Song the Hedgehog, Official Mad Libs, uh, Song the Hedgehog, three action-packed stories, Sonic and the Tales of Deception, and the uh, Welcome to the World of Sonic, all released by uh, Penguin Young Reader's License. And just saying that out loud makes me regret some life choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so so we'll, start, we'll, we'll go through these quickly because none of them have that much to talk about. We thought we'd bring up here. Mad Libs is your, is your standard Mad Libs. There's a bunch of, you know, different uh, things to go yeah. through. Says Sonic a, themed. Says is a family show, so we can't do true Mad Libs because yeah. um, what's Mad Libs without just using swears, right? Maybe at some point in the future, maybe we will uh, get drunk and do uh, a Mad Lib yes. video of this. Um, but so look for that in about seven years. So, I mean, if you're a fan of Mad Libs <laughs> and just got some kids, pick this up. Although, again, you, you could probably find these online somewhere if you so chose yeah i, I saw people t uh tweeting there yeah some of theirs yeah um let's do the storybook next because i think the the main thing is is, is the kind of main oh really i thing. would have i i disagree i think this is the main thing because it's got three action-packed stories but they're not very good um so the tales of deception let's, let's give the credits it's so were you deceived at all Received in the sense that yeah, like, they're I tales of deception. Money back. You want your money back? I'm joking. Uh, so it's it's done by Jake Black with illustrations by Ian McGinty, and featuring help with Arlo, uh, Coverbius, Tabby Freeman, and Axia Enos. I probably misspelled, mispronounced one of those names. So we have three different stories here. In not so fantastic journey, where Eggman uses nanobots to try and uh, turn Sonic into a robot but unfortunately Knuckles is hit and Sonic has to uh, go down into Knuckles body to uh, destroy the Queen Dinobot and save his friend and then which you know it's a it's a story it's okay <laughs> I don't know I, I see I like the idea that no, I like I like Knuckles trying to protect Sonic like jumping in the way of hmm. Sonic uh, to save him i like that um, then, mm -hmm. that's about it we you have, should read your favorite line we have fight <laughs> we'll get those. we have fighting shadow where eggman uses a mind control device to take control of sonic turn him evil and have him you know start wrecking stuff up and knuckles tells and amy <clears throat> have to go to shadow to help as uh, shadow is the only one um who conceivably can keep up with sonic and assist them Shadow uh, is able to uh, help clear Sonic of his mind control, and then Sonic and Shadow go and bust up Eggman's machine. Then the last one, Doppelganger. A, uh, Sonic from the future shows up and pretends to say that, oh, I'm, part, I'm from the future where we've finally defeated Eggman. It's going to happen in two days, and it just so happens to use Tails, the machine you're currently working on. And Sonic, Sonic doesn't believe it, and uh, it's obviously revealed that he's evil he's actually a robot from robotnik who tries to get rid of sonic by putting a device on his shoes that keeps him running forever which is dumb and then sonic uh, comes back and then defeats the robot and <clears throat> all is good you know what that story in particular there is a arc in stc with this with this exact story i was hoping you'd bring that up my man knows <laughs> um it's not quite the same thing but a sonic from the future shows up who turns out to be revealed to be a uh, like a, a robotic um, yeah except he has a beard it's completely different you know what you know what's weird about that though to go off on a quick tangent and it's something we'll get to in SEC the first time that was printed there was a printed error on the last page mm. and it, they reprinted the dialogue 
from two pages ago. So you had to wait until the next week where they they print it like, sorry about that, we messed up. Like here's the rule dialogue. So I'm reading it and I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like this is like Nigel Kitchen. This is our choice, our choice to have <laughs> them repeat the same stuff. Like why, why is Sonic saying you'll never get away with this when old Sonic's exploding for? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> The other interesting thing about that, speaking of speaking of comic books and this book, the first story is actually very similar to an Archie issue, where Sonic has to shrink down and go into the bodies of the Freedom Fighters to fight a disease that Robotnik has put into them. The first was, I mean, the first story that's such a stock like cartoon. Right. Like Futurama's done it, Cow and Chicken's done it. Like so many cartoons have done the. Oh, we gotta shrink down and go into someone's body to, to do something. Rick and Morty did it, you know. Like yeah. so many shows have done that kind of stuff thing. The I would probably say the, the probably the best story in, for me um, is the second one with, with Shadow there. Because you, you get you get some kind of fun thing to Shadow when Knuckles tries to be like, "Do what I say," and Shadow's like, "No." Yeah. I do think I do think um, Shadow's portrayal is on point. Yeah, and it's, you know, there's a few things in here where um, every time Amy appears or says something, they have to say Amy Rose. They don't just say Amy. Like Amy Rose joined them. So Amy funny. Rose said this. Like just cool. like I get it for like the first introduction of of each story. Start with her full name. I get that, but then let's move on to Amy. Right. TJ, what was the look? As I was reading this, me as TJ and I were driving around in his car earlier today, and was it about Knuckles' arms? No, it was the one about um, it was the one about bees. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, here we go. So I would I would read random lines, and this might be my favorite thing ever written. Deep inside his hideout, Doctor Eggman welcomed his swarm of bees back to their mechanical hive. Like real honey bees, with the loss of their stingers, the robots would soon shut down forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought there was something I could just pull like, and put in why? my own. There's like so many just like like weird... I mean, obviously this is a book written for children, right. so you can't like uh, trash it too much, but I mean, again, we're, we're also 30... Uh, I'm close to being 30 and I'm, I'm reviewing a children's book on a podcast, so I've clearly made some mistakes in my life. But well, there were there were sentences in here that I was like, I could just pull this out and put it in my my Sonic fan fiction. There was one there was one that sounded a little sensuous about Knuckles' arm. I was like, yeah, the fire hmm. treatment. Oh yeah, I know. You know what? A weird thing is, all the pictures have this kind of blue monotone. They're not really colored in. They're just like this weird blue. And I yeah. don't. Uh, again, the um. Not the, you know, uh, Mr. Ian McGinty, far better artist than I ever ever could hope to be. But I'm like, uh, you couldn't have got, like, Tracy Yardley for this? You know, you could have, like, Jennifer Spaz Hernandez. Does, like, some of the... Spaz does children's books. Didn't Spaz do the, um, make the officially licensed Genesis card coloring book? He did something. I think he did, like, I a cover for that or did something cover. for that, but... Like, you could have got anyone from Archie to, to do this. And, again, no disrespect, but it would have, um... Would have looked a bit better. Just because uh, some some pictures some pictures look good. Yeah, and I then like the some... picture of Eggman with uh, Eggman smirking on that weird thing, pressing that button. Yeah, some oh, yeah, some of them good. look good, but you know it's weird though. I, I don't think any picture of Amy looks on model. I think every picture mm. of Amy looks off. Shadow looks not bad. Knuckles Knuckles and Tails vary from ish, from uh, drawing to drawing, but it's like. Uh, mm, yeah, but uh, I like still... Knuckles' fang. Mm-hmm. Draws him with a fang. So you know, if if you know, if you so if you have if you're you know a Sonic fan or you have uh, a child who's you like, want to torture, you want to torture, or you know who has basic reading comprehension, and a Sonic fan, this you know you can't for seven bucks you can't go much worse. You know it's pretty pretty good. It's pretty so, good. So, Gareth, are you gonna buy the sequel, Tales of Terror? Hell yeah. Hell yeah! Oh yeah, that looks. That sounds like we're going to be reading this. We're going to be talking about the second book in this in later. Seven years time, and then so the final book they have is the uh, Welcome to the World of Sonic. Something of like a reintroduction slash uh, children's encyclopedia. Maybe you might want to refer to this as kind it's of, a yeah. it's a brief history thing of um. It pretty much just counts 
the modern age from uh, pretty much everything, every modern Sonic thing from SA1 to Before Forces. So the book is spread up into two halves, characters and stories. It has brief character breaks down, breakdown of every uh, of every character. Obviously, Sonic gets the most attention, and then you get Tails and Knuckles, Amy, Shadow. So, you know, let me read off all the characters they have in here. We've got Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, Shadow, Silver, Blaze, Cream, Vector, Charmy, SBO, Ruse, Chows, Dr. Eggman, E-102 Gamma, Beta Cap, Bubblegum Rogues, Chaos Metal Sonic, and then it breaks down... Uh, recaps of the video games we have SA1, SA2, Advance 1 to 3, Heroes Rush, Rush Adventure, Colors Generations, Lost World, Secret Rings, Black Knight, Unleashed, and All Stars Racing. It's also weird that they're not in like release, they're not in like um, chronological like release order. Because right. Colors is before Unleashed. Well, like, like, yeah, Unleashed is like second to last, and you know, it, that, that's weird right. um you know I, i'm surprised to put the advanced games and the rush games that i'm like oh that, that's i cool. thought that was cool that's cool and so it's weird like so in every every character has a breakdown of, of their species gender height weight and status and status is just like you know member of chaotix team or like not or like sonic's best friend that type of thing so that's something me Ru- rouge's was um a friend knuckles, of knuckles friend of knuckles is like really just friends <laughs> Come on. It's also a weird thing, which I'm not sure why you would bother putting things like, like, wait and height. One thing I noticed that TJ didn't agree with, but they have Sonic and Knuckles as the same height. No. Knuckles is taller. Why are you telling me this? Because TJ didn't agree with me. You don't think Knuckles is taller than Even Sonic? Even though all of their sprites no. and, and models, he's taller. See, I don't think he's t- as tall as... I, I, I don't think that he is... Um, if you look at the Tommy toys, I don't think he's that much taller. Tommy toys. But I think he's taller than he's Sonic. He's taller, yeah. It's not... He's taller than Sonic, but I don't think he's, he's not, that much he's, taller. He's not, he's not the main main Knuckles. He's not Boom Knuckles level right. of height. But he's, he's still tall. And again, we're arguing about height of a fictional cartoon character. Speaking but... of the heights and weights, it's weird to think about how tall these guys are. Because what Sonic's, what, two feet? No, three, three feet, feet, four, four inches. inches. It's like, what? I'm like, if I go out, Sonic is like... That tall. That's you, know, crazy. you know what's great though in in Ready Player One, he has a cameo in that, mm-hmm. and you can tell they clearly stuck the cannon. Really? Because he's tiny on like because he's he's standing next to like other characters and he's tiny. So they, it, it's weird because he has his his modern design, mm-hmm. but he's like that height. So that that because I I always I always saw like classic being that high and like right. modern being like. Like four, but like four and a half, yeah. five feet type of thing. So it's it's weird to have that model with like the longer legs and longer mm-hmm. arms still be that tiny um, in skull. But so what, are you saying we should all go watch Ready Player One? Yes, I'm saying we should just because Sonic. I'm still joining. How many times are you gonna see it? Seven times. Uh, seven. And I'm gonna I'm gonna buy everything related to it. One thing TJ and I thought was weird going through this is for in the weights, with the exception of of Cream, it none of the so female. So you got the same height. Uh, Knuckles is. <laughs> TT just put a fan out of Knuckles and Sonic kissing. <laughs> and and the even tip, in that, the look, tip of Knuckles', look, head, Knuckles head is clearly head is taller than clothes. Sonic's. You're just proving yourself wrong, TJ. But to go but, back to. No, what, no, no, keep it up. <laughs> I didn't say stop. But to go back to what I was about to say, it's weird how. I'm not sure why they did this, but with the exception of Cream, every female character underweight. It either says unknown, secret, or not telling. Like, don't do that. Sexism. Just don't, yeah, girl, don't do that. So again, like this. This won't tell, you know, uh, fans like, you know, do we be 30-year-olds like us? This won't tell you anything new. But for kids to get into the right. franchise, you know, I think this is, it's a, uh, eight bucks. It, it's a good book to give new, new fans. Oh, you know, it also... It also includes stickers, which is why I bought it. <laughs> well, and um, also, if you're a kid just getting into the franchise, are you really going to go back and play SA1, SA2, ad- ad- the Advanced series? I mean, you better. Mm. Well, a few Have thing, you? A few, thing, a few things of note is that for under the SA1 sum up, they, let me read the SA1 sum up. <laughs> it started when I spotted the Station Square Police in a shootout by a weird water monster. It's really but that much. Like, this... The sum up of, of SA1 is three little speech bubbles. Right. And the first one is just talking about literally the first minute of the game. 
And they mentioned a shootout with the police, which you'd think they wouldn't bring that up. But, but okay. okay. This is also one. Of, <laughs> this is also one of the things where they they further cement that generations that classic Sonic in generations is from another dimension. Uh, I love the way and because um, everything, all all of the games are kind of narrated from Sonic's point of view. Yeah. So the last little section for generations is along the way. I met this little guy. He looked like me, but he actually came from another dimension. And if David T. Lurker was here, he'd be ripping out his hair because he hates that. Yeah, I hate it too. Uh, even, even yeah, because it doesn't make doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But yeah, so those... I do. I do like how cheap this is because you can clearly see that they use the same uh, stock art. On the same page for some of these, like with Big the Cat, they just flip it. Yeah, what's that? Because um, for all, all, of, all of the stock art, they're going for where they can. <clears throat> a lot of it is taken from SA One, SA Two, the advanced games, mm-hmm. and um, Sonic, like Channel. Sonic Channel stuff. Which yeah, I, so... I, I I like all the Sonic Channel stuff. I wouldn't mind them using more of that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the only thing is, is that. Um, there's not there's not enough original artwork to have every page have something new, and it's just it's a very small thing for me. But it's just like it's kind of weird uh, when you're talking about something like uh, Sonic Colors. They're using poses that I know are from like Advance Two. I'm like right. this doesn't connect with this game. I'm super a giant old, nerd. Super old uh, stock art. Probably the the, the newest. <laughs> Uh, original artwork is for at least they have something from the of the Werehog. Right. That's probably the most um, up to date piece of artwork they have. Um, so yeah, those are the three. But they had um, few few of young kids um, who were into Sonic, or you're just a a collector like we are. You can pick. Well, them. like Gareth and me are. Yeah, TJ doesn't care enough. You, he doesn't like the literature. You, you know, you can you can pick up all three books for under twenty bucks. You know, so. Eh. 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 So moving on to, I guess, to the main um, topic of discussion for today would be in about uh, a week and a half, the IDW book will be coming out, and as it's been revealed before, the first month, month of April, is going to have the first arc, four issues, one a week. Um, from what from what we know, I think what has come out from WonderCon is that it's confirmed it it picks up after Sonic Forces. So, I mean, we kind of guessed that. We guessed it, but now they, they now we know so. for a fact it is. And I think, I might be wrong, but I think I read somewhere, or this may have just be fan conjecture that is incorrect, but I think it's something like these are going to be somewhat canon to the game series now, maybe, possibly? I heard that it was going to be separate still. Separate, okay. I heard, I heard that it was going to be separate still. I, I don't think Sega would let them have a tangle if this wasn't separate. Must have been, must have been. So, that's at least what I heard, but and, I don't know. And the big news, since we did one of these, is that, <clears throat> at least for the first four issues, they've um, brought back um, beloved fan artists. Mm-hmm. So, issue we one. We start off with the dream team. Issue one. Our main man, Tracy Yardley, is back on pencil duty. Um, so, issue, I, I believe Matt Herms is back on coloring. Matt and Herms is coloring. J- J- Jack Loretti on letters? No. Who's on letters? I don't know who's on letters. Who's on inks? Is that Tracy doing his own inks? You know who it is. Dream Team. Dream Team! I know his name, but I'm, blank, I'm blanking on Jim Amish! Jim Amish! Jim yeah. Amish is back! Oh boy! Oh boy, Jim. No offense, Terry Austin, but I'm glad to see you gone. Um, so. I, I was so surprised that they brought Jim over. I'm so happy. That is, that is like, when I heard that it was Matt oh. Herms, I was so. To me, I was like. Jim upset. just, Jim just announced. Uh, I saw, I've been waiting. Announced what? All... He'll be at Heroes Con. I've hey! been waiting for like months for him to show up. Now I'm only waiting for Adam Bryce Thomas, who I don't know if is going to, because he's not he's not listed for Heroes Con yet. Hmm. Okay, but um, so yeah, first issue, Dream Team. Dream Team. Uh, and I believe Tyson Hess is doing, um, covers. he's doing uh, a, a alternate covers for each issue, which will connect. Mm-hmm. Which um, Archie did. Which most issues, like new books, will do at some point. You know, Archie did that a lot for various things. Um, general, who I know who's on. 
issue three is issue two evan stanley i'm trying to find it um your, this internet is really slow <laughs> don't be blaming my internet just just do what i my do. phone is really just old i mean get off slow. it slow <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that was a really good move by, um, IDW to right off the bat to, to just be like, you know, here are artists, the artists you've been wanting, the artists that, right. that we know you love, at least for the first arc, here are four of your favorites. Well, and they've been using Evan Stanley's artwork for the cover for issue, whichever issue it is with Tangle as the um banners at conventions so they're mm. I, I feel like they're going really all out with sonic um they've been putting out promotional material there's a poster you can get for free if you go to the idw booth um at conventions which we're not there well i bought it all we can't <laughs> of course you did <laughs> yeah, oh, okay i've got it up okay so who's on issue two issue two is ian flynn and adam bryce thomas okay return the front that's something we didn't talk about mm-hmm. the sonic forces prequel but uh, you know mm. we'll, we'll finish this and then okay. we'll, we'll we'll go back there but obviously right. if, adam bryce thomas recently did a bunch of comic books the, like officially uh, like th- through sega so and those are the first direct from sega comic books from the West, I think, ever maybe, or at least for like a long time. Um, nineteen ninety one. There was a, <clears throat> there was a, uh, an issue that was like a little ash can that would they would pass out. Mm. Um, that was the whole European origin. The best origin I know. With the rotten egg in the fridge. I lo- it's so dumb. I <clears throat> love it. So, someday we'll talk about that. Someday. <clears throat> Well, well actually, we'll talk about that with SCC, SCC. because yeah, it's the same thing. It's, it's the we can, we can compare, because, I mean, it's got worse art. <laughs> STC's got better art, that's what I should say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, number three, Jennifer Hernandez. Yeah, it's Jenny from the Block. She's back, back again. Oh, yeah. And then four is Evan, Evan Stanley. Stanley. Which, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty dang good collection. Oh, yeah. Um, I think some people would have liked to have seen Tyson on there. Tyson's but I, too busy. I think it's been revealed thanks to Sonic Mania Adventures. <clears throat> He's busy walking on those, and I think he might still be doing some things for the Invented Zim movie. But um, I don't know if that's wrapping up or not, but he's been working on it. He, he was a storyboard artist on right. that. Um, so, busy man, you know. And obviously, I, I, he was working on the Mania trailer and all this stuff, so... Uh, so yeah, but I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll get, when things slow down for him, we'll get a, right. some Tyson well, they're, stuff. They rec, they, they certainly recognize that he is a big deal because they, they're, they're putting him out front in panels. Well, he was also the first artist <clears throat> revealed, even though he was just doing right. covers. was like the first official image was a Tyson Hess image, which people assumed, oh, he's going to be the main artist. And that was... That was the, you know, there's a big thing with IDW where in the beginning whenever they, they would host these Q&As, mm-hmm. so many of those questions, the answers would be like, great question, we'll let you know later. Then what's the point of these Q&A? Like the first, I forget if we, if we watched it together, but I remember watching it live stream. It might have been, it was at New York Comic Con. Right. And like, you know, I nothing but respect for everyone involved in that panel. But in terms of the answers we got, it was almost pointless. In terms of the, because right. we, 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 well, at that, at that panel, we found out Ian was writing it, which first and foremost, we need that good. Anyone else, like, no, thank you. We found out when it was coming out and that the first month would have four issues. Mm-hmm. Aside from those three, which admittedly, key, you know, very important pieces of information, every other question that was asked, we're just like, we'll find them more later. Yeah, find out more later. We'll hold off for now, but maybe later. I, I just remember during that Q&A, someone asked about STC reprints. And they were like, I don't know, maybe we'll look into it. Nah. I and think the, I think the biggest thing is, as long as, as long as we keep telling them we want these things, like STC, um, there's actually a WhiteHouse.gov petition for the Freedom Fighters. 
It's got like six. I I don't remember oh how many people have ha- signed it, but I think it's six thousand or something. Oh, what's what? wrong with this planet? See, I want them in it. I don't want them to be main characters. What's wrong? I want it to be like I want it to be like people IDW though, Transformers. The fact that people put this on the White House website. What's wrong with the do you not, have you never gone to whitehouse.gov, the petition part of it? No. Is it for oh, the dumb crap? It's oh, yeah. The dumb crap. <laughs> I can't believe you've never been on it. Bring back spectacular Spider Man. I'm sure there is one. There, yeah, That's why it exists. Is. Because the president can apparently do that. It's it's literally anything. Uh, I, I gotta go out and do what I'm doing tonight. I'm gonna make some <laughs> stupid petitions. But, oh uh, man, we should just have FTCR petitions, <laughs> like official. Make FTCR governor of Illinois. Break this, the American flag. <laughs> Is that a real one? TJ put up an image of <laughs> fan out of Sonic and Knuckles badly drawn and sticking their tongues out together. And then Tails was upset in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So... Back to back the to the game. issues. Um, there are there are a couple <coughs> new characters that we're getting. <coughs> I think the biggest one that they're pushing the most is Tangle. Tangle, who's um, a lemur. Nice, nice design. Nice. Aside from the tail, which is a bit atypical for game Sonic design, the basic right. the her basic design fits in. Which I think it's the same design aesthetic they had with the Archie reboot. Right. But they were like, we, we, the problem in the old Archie, which we've talked about before, was that Sonic and, and all the game characters had this kind of one uniform style. Mm-hmm. And then the old Safi and Freedom Fighters, <clears throat> like, they didn't clash, but their designs weren't exactly the same. Right. And so in the reboot, they were like, you know, uh, limbs got thicker. Like, you know, if you look at Sally, pre and post reboot, her little limbs, her arms and legs get thicker than to match the Sonic style, which I prefer. You know, and, right. and uh, Certain characters wear more clothes and, and all this type of stuff, and so we've, we've never seen a Sonic character with possibly, with the exception of possibly Big, with like a tail that pronounced. Um, well, I like it. I think I think I like that design. I really, I really do do like that. And design. it looks like the tail is gonna be like her unique ability. Her, so like, it, so if she was a playable character, it would just be the, like she would replace tails as oh, the character with tail does stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, but she wouldn't she... fly. Conker flies with one tail, and Conker's my third eye. Yeah. Well, her her tail seems to look like it is an extra hand. Yeah, it can make like I, I, right. I I'd be shocked if we don't see a punch someone using that tail. Oh, I'm sure. And then we have uh, Rough and Tumble, which have as already made, <laughs> President Manchild, Ken Penders, uh, throw some shade. Uh, you see, I forget I forget which one is which, and apparently even Jennifer Hernandez, I think, who drew who drew, um. Drew the issue they appearing right. was like even behind the scenes some people were getting them confused as to who is which. Yeah. I forget. So there's a a big character and a little character. They're meant to be, I guess, just. I, what I gathered was they it's likely they're gonna be the Bebop and Rocksteady, <laughs> possibly, just two kind of thugs who they will occasionally fight. Yeah, you know, and I guess one of them is a skunk, and even though he looks nothing like Jeffrey St. John. Oh, Penders look like they're clearly ripping me off. Because it's a skunk. Only I can make skunks. I own Knuckles. He is my character. That's... All praise the Penders. That's so rich, seeing as... Thank you, Father. Seeing <laughs> as... Seeing as... Thank you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> I love that comment. Was that... That was Tyson Hess. That's Tyson... Yeah. Mwah! Tyson Hess, I love you. No laughing near the Emerald. <laughs> That's that's so rich seeing as um, he took Jeffrey St. John's design from a background character from Saturday Morning. There's well, a and also skunk. for the fact that in Laura Sue Chronicles, he steals Scott Mackey's face. Yes! <laughs> that's why I got kicked no, off uh, of his Twitter. Which is, no, you got kicked off his Twitter because you posted, oh yeah! He, Anthony Mackey. Give me, is it, what did I say? Scott. Scott Mackey is a kid I went to school with. <laughs> Anthony Mackey! <laughs> Shout out. Oh, yeah. He stole that kid. He's famous now. He stole Scott's face. You me. Um, but, yeah, and appara- yeah. apparently Loris, the Loris U Chronicles app is launching soon. And it's supposed to launch with, like, old Archie issues on it. <sighs> you don't own those, Pinders. What are you doing? No, he, he filed for the copyright. Let him do it. Let him do it. <laughs> 
I he wonder. Like he listens to this. It's like, I wonder. Like it, it was a joke. let's say let's let's say he doesn't have the copyright and he just takes them. Mm-hmm. Do you think at this point Archie and or Sega would even bother at this? Point? Archie wouldn't. Sega might. Hmm. Yeah. Archie definitely wouldn't. Sega might because that's their intellectual property, or should be. Yeah, yeah that everything. It's yeah. A... I think they have an obligation to. <clears throat> Even, yeah, I think they have an obligation to even if they don't care about the content. Yeah. Yeah, which uh, it be, will be uh, interesting to see what happens. And I Cause, mean, cause if, if Sega's, they don't... Because Sega's the one that Penders sued. Mm-hmm. Archie sued mm-hmm. Penders, which yes. is a distinction. And there's two lawsuits. So I think that's why that some of the Scottabot is, again, we, we, I think we've opened this in the past, but apparently Sega were kind of egging on Archie to sue Penders. Yeah. Because they were like, we, I think that thing was like, we're currently in a lawsuit with this guy. We don't want to actively be, you know, involved directly. You do it. Well, because they were doing EA. Yeah, it, 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 it was it was Sega and... Um, it was Sega and... EA. Yeah, was it EA? Yes. Yeah, for Chronicles. Yeah, Chronicles. Yep. So, did Sega and did EA. EA release Chronicles? Yes. Yes. Because it was, it was, what's the, it was the company who made it? It was Bio... Bioware. Bioware. Um, yeah. Bioware, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, it's Crazy Town. So, maybe we'll do a, maybe we'll do a review of the Lord of Super Chronicles if we can stop laughing after <laughs> st- illegally stealing that app. That's that, a big if. I wonder, I am debating if he actually does a physical copy, whether or not he'll buy it. Like, who's gonna buy it? Weirdos like me. Good point, well made. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be. So I think I think we'll, we'll, well, well. Other people that are returning: Jamal Peppers and Rafa Knight for covers. Yes. And I think that's it. I know that they've announced issues five and six, but I'm not sure if they've announced artists for those. I'm sure that they're solicits. Oh, okay. Turn so let me just pull them up. Game Informer did an interview with Ian Flynn. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ian's... I did have you been really pushing Ian mm-hmm. for promotion, which is great. Oh, you know who I, I would like to see return that they haven't talked about? Spaz? But who's still working with IDW and is oh. going to be doing a Bebop and Rocksteady mini? Ben Bates? Ben Bates. Yeah. I think it would be likely for Ben Bates... Ben Bates? Ben Bates to <laughs> return. Okay, so... Issue 5 is going to be the second arc, and it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be them searching for Eggman. It's going to introduce um, the, uh, it's going to introduce Shadow and Rouge and the Chaotix. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. And Jamal Peppers is going to be drawing at least the first issue of it. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> um, ooh. And then there's going to be a cover by Kieran... Kieran Gates, who I think was doing other ones. Kieran Gates, he is the the um, fan turn artist who did all of the promotional artwork for Mania. Whoa! So the studio opening post I have hanging up, and so like when they um, the front cover and uh, like when they revealed Mighty and Raid, the artwork I saw it was all that that guy. Hmm. I think I met him. I think I think I met him slash was in his proximity at a summer Sonic years back. Nice, you know, from all accounts, nice guy. It's great that, you know, he's he kind of like Tyson Hess and T Lopes, that like fan and, and Christian Whitehead mm-hmm. of like fan turned <laughs> working on this franchise. And Ian Flynn and Tracy. Pretty much most people in terms of the comic book really start off as fans, at least at this point. Right. Um but yeah. Yeah. So issue six Tracy's back on co- uh, on uh, interiors. Nice. So it's it sounds. I like seeing everyone, but I wouldn't mind some consistency. I mean, I I I, I get for the you know what I get for the first four right. issues, but I, I wouldn't mind if, if like that... like you give Tracy an arc, give Jen Hernandez an arc, yeah. Tyson Hess an arc. You know that yeah. I was, I'd like consistency in my stories. I don't mind switching out story to story, but yeah, I would like it. I, I, I could maybe see them for the first half year, maybe even for the first year. 
swapping out so, right. so everyone gets a goal or two. Yeah. But yeah, at some point I would like a more consistent, a a certain style for an arc, oh, and yeah. then move on. Yeah. Jonathan Gray is going to be doing a cover. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And then Natalie Fordrain is doing variants for like uh, she's new. She's new, but she's she's but she's doing a lot of variants. I think I've seen I think I've seen her work. It looks yeah. good. Like I, I haven't really seen good. I haven't seen anything involved that I think looked bad. So yeah. Also, if you uh, if you want, you can buy them all in a slip cover in a slip case box set issues one through four with an additional. I think it's all the color. I think it might be all the covers or all the basic covers, and then a sketch cover cover in a slipcase. I've got the ones for Gem. They did the first three arcs of, or first, I think first two arcs of Gem in this slipcase. It's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. I don't actually see the point to it, but it's cool to have. And it's shiny. Or at least the Gem one is. It's all hologram. It's got a new hat. I want it, I want it, I want it. (laughs) Um, Other things... IDW Games is putting out a Sonic game coming out in July. Was that, was that the Kickstarter? No, that's not the Kickstarter. Oh. It's something. Did you back the Kickstarter? No, I didn't. I Did meant you? to. I literally meant to, and I was because I knew it was happening. I knew it was, it was on, on the last day. I was like, I'll get to it. <laughs> and as I went to it, it had like closed like 10 minutes ago. I was like, damn it. No, I can't get that exclusive Super Sonic toy. I thought it was cool, but I was like, I don't have that much money. So I was like, eh. Maybe if you want to buy convention exclusives. Priorities. Priorities. I um I did back the STC twenty five one to get the comic. <laughs> they had an option where if you're not gonna go, they'll just send you the stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll do that. Um They also Precious. Bless him. <laughs> this this boy. Oh, there's also if you go to Sega uh, the Sega store. The Sega sh- sh- shop. Shop. You com, can get um, first four issues. First four issues. With an exclusive variant. Exclusive variant and t shirt. T shirt. 40 bucks. <clears throat> Not sure if it. I, I, I was thinking about this. Because that, that's four issues. That's five issues, really. If we assume they're four bucks pop. And that the t shirt would run at about 25 bucks. That's. That's. Not that good. Yeah. 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 Not for me, but yeah. The last I'm currently wearing, the, I bought us the uh, officially licensed Sonic Mania t-shirt with profile heads of Sonic Knuckles and Tails. Not the best quality. I don't. I you know it's yeah. it's. Uh, yeah. I'm like, I don't think the um, officially licensed Sonic shirts that come directly from from like the Sega sh- like store themselves. At the high quality, I'd rather buy them in like an, an actual printing company, you know, just like a licensed out uh, shirt rather than ones that make directly. I don't think these are the best quality, so I, I'm, I'm gonna pass in that collection. I'm happy just to yeah. get the uh books as they come out. And there are several exclusive variants, There's it's IDW, it's IDW. Jonathan, say it here, are you gonna are you gonna continue your insane quest? I've already, I've already done it. Oh. I've already, I've already, I've already. So I've talked to our so our comic shop gave me oh, the no, poster, the retail poster, and they said they'd get me all the covers. How? Except for the one in a hundred. So I'll have to figure that out. There's also a uh, there's also a um, what's it called? Dynamic Forces exclusive. Jamie, uh, our comic shop owners. Jamie and Teresa said they if they were going to the Diamond Sellers Summit, they would bring me back one. Uh, and then I gotten the WonderCon stuff. Are you gonna do what, for, what is that? I don't understand. Are you Blessing? gonna do this for every issue? Because I love you do so, insane I know. exclusives. Well, I I was thinking about it. And I was looking at my collection and I was thinking I was like, I, and this is how I convinced myself. I was like, you know, I'm kind of a Sonic comic historian or archivist. Yeah, yeah. I've got all of this stuff, and it's it's just a really nice collection, and I wouldn't mind being having these and being like, oh, I know 
what this is from. I can explain this. I know the the history behind it. Um, because I I do, and I brought things that I know why they're relevant to the <coughs> history of the Sonic the Hedgehog as a comic book character. So that is that is the way I convinced myself to do it so far. One one person is ashamed of me. One is maybe a little not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I just I just fear for your bank account. Yeah, it's not the greatest. <laughs> Um, you know, I know, I know. We said we were gonna go through the um, the forces things. Why don't we save that for another day and treat that as a? Mm -hmm. We can do that in another. Um, yeah. The one thing I want to say about on. that is, why didn't they just use those as the exclusive comic book instead of these? They were already in English. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was some weird licensing thing with um, mm -hmm. uh, printing them. Maybe, maybe, maybe at, at that time because of. IDW maybe they, they only had rights for digital only. It's possible they they did have the rights to um, hmm. you know like uh, uh, decent. But I put the word out. Even though we, we don't normally do this, I thought we haven't been done one of these in a while, and I thought that this episode would be slightly on the shorter side, which it is. So I put a, a, a couple of questions. I put out you know if anyone has any questions for us, and we have a handful. Um, I'll put out the ones that are, even though this is just a comic book podcast i've got a lot of questions about non-comic stuff so we'll try and go through those uh good uh good buddy stefan ask what's your favorite and least favorite pre-ian reboot arc read that again what is your favorite and least favorite pre-ian flynn reboot arc okay that there were so many words in there i was like they only rebooted it like two times and it was both ian what are you talking about yeah see so um pre-reboot non-ian stuff so old school um issue 25 is always one of my favorites least favorite um least favorite hmm. oh um crud guard um the freedom fighters of the galaxy not not the not the freedom fighters where it was fantastic four but the freedom fighters arc where it was the guardians of the galaxy that was complete nonsense yeah i haven't i haven't read much pre in stuff so i can't really yeah i, I can't either <laughs> although it was least, on best art least favorite ken Bendis. <laughs> yes just in general um we're gonna one what is your most anticipated movie this year Infinity War, why not? Sonic coming out? Yeah, probably. Next year. Oh. Probably Infinity War at this point right now. Then I'm going to go to sleep until next year. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen Black Panther yet. Well, okay. I haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> I, I would see. like to see Black Panther. It's good. It's, it's, it's making all the monies. Um, we got one from Banana D for Smash. <clears throat> If you could have one character from the Archie comics cross over into the IDW comics, who would you pick and why? I'm gonna go for Scourge. Scourge was just fun, man. He's just I know I know at this point another evil Sonic is on paper cliche and dumb. But Ian did something. He's Scourge is different from Shadow. He's yeah. different from Metal Sonic. Because he is he's literally Sonic turned evil. Um and I think there's just something about their interaction was always just fun. And Scourge Lockdown remains one of my favorite arcs ever. Because uh, there's, like, there's... With Scourge, it's, it's like he's... He's almost, like, metal in the fact that he's just unrelentlessly evil. But there's, there's a few moments where for, like, a brief, like, second, you see some humanity in him. But then it's, qu it's quickly taken away... And he just wants to murder everything. <laughs> um, so I would, I would say there is no chance in hell of Scourge ever no. appearing again. Or or them doing a Evil Sonic again. Because they, again, in, in, in the canon, there's already two. So you don't you know, don't really need more than that. But my vote would be for Scourge. I'm, I'm going to assume Jonathan's going to be Antoine. Of course. He's my favorite. <laughs> He's my favorite fighting Frenchman. He's my favorite. I... 
Yeah, because he's my favorite. <laughs> I would say... <laughs> say Antoine. No one say Snively. No. White House, White House, Doc Gov. Bring Antoine back. <laughs> I'm inclined to say Sally. Really? Yeah. Well, you hate Sally. I just think... I don't hate her. I just think she's kind of boring. I think it's... Her role in in the reboot didn't help. I think where a lot of her character in, in the reboot was just to a question in herself. And mm-hmm. I'm like... like I, I, I get... Alright, I take it back. Bunny. Nah, yeah! There we go. The, if we got Sally... If we got Bunny, Antoine, and Scourge in the new book, I'm happy with that. Me too. We got Jonathan's favorite character, my favorite Archie character... And TJ's fetish porn love. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no! That wasn't this a is says a joke. Show. That wasn't a says joke. It says the, after hours. It says the decision your daddy, Sonic says. What's wrong with your freedom fighter? <laughs> Sonic says generation two. <laughs> Sonic says after dark. Sonic turns into a tank now. It's all new. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought those would be good. So a lot of these are uh, nothing to do with... Uh, uh, Kari Kai 64 says, Well, didn't you wait like an hour to record after the IW panel? I had no idea they had a panel. And again, oh, because, because the book comes out in a week, I doubt they're going to reveal much. Because what's the point? They're probably going to show some art. That's probably well, again, it's, about it. it it's, but... it's out, so like, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they show off most of the first issue, which I, I can't read it now, so I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Uh, Hurricane Pigeon asks if they add more characters, who do you want to be added to? Whoa, Mania? whoa, whoa, whoa! So, I, Sonic IDW Town Hall 2018. Ian Flynn confirms Freedom Fighters will be covered in the panel. The answer is coming soon. <sighs> <laughs> See, just say yes or no, man. Oh my! Ah, wait. So, wait, so Jonathan. So he's he did not confirm yesterday. He just said we'll let you know soon. We'll let you know during the panel. <laughs> <laughs> or did it say during the panel? I need to read this again. Uh, Sonic ID. No, this was. So this is <laughs> during. This is during the panel. panel. It's during the panel, I think he says this. Today is the Sonic IDW uh, Town Hall, and a major development has already surfaced leading up to it. Yesterday, Ian Flynn was interviewed by Sonic Stadium. This is from TSSC, by okay. the way. And he was uh, asked about the Freedom Fighters. The answer was surprising. Are any plans for the Freedom Fighters in the future? We'll cover that in the panel tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh. This does not confirm that they will debut in the comics, just that the panel will mention them. However, a tweet by Ian Flynn earlier today may raise some eyebrows. Gee, I wonder what questions we'll get at the panel. Hashtag knowing smile. Ah, Ian Flynn, you son of a gun! <laughs> when is this? What Can we see this right now? I need to go there. <laughs> You know, let's let, let's finish these questions. We can we can pop off and then maybe we can wait a bit, find the answer and add tack or something onto the end. How's that sound? Oh my gosh! So I'm let's go. Cry. Let's go through a new other question. So again, what other questions would you want to be added to Mania Plus? Of course, Mania Plus is the physical version of Sonic Mania, which adds Raider Flying Squirrel and Mighty the Armadillo. To another character. Freedom Fighters. You know what, Amy? A lot of people said it. Amy. Oh, I would love no, camera I'm, I'm mechanics. I'm telling you to go away. Um, yeah. The chaotix. <laughs> Imagine if it was just like every every old school character, like the chaotix, <laughs> my city armadillo, like everyone. Heavy and bomb. Heavy and bomb. Amy Rose, and then Nat the weasel being the dynamite. God. I would love to play as Bark Nat. the polar bear. Nat's God. God. <laughs> God. <Gandhi>. Jesus. <laughs> Imagine Super Jesus. Gandhi the human. Gandhi the human. Um, so yeah, yeah, you know, every, whatever. I would say any 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 character who debuted before SA1, I'd be cool with them adding in. Keep it keep it classic themed. 
So like no shadow, no rouge, none of that. Keep any any kind of classic character. They really should do Amy. Yeah. I would like I would like them to do something with her tarot cards. That was one of the things I thought they was mentioned cool in the, about in, the yeah hero in, book. in the hero, in the um history book they actually say her hobby is tarot cards, which is a reference to the Japanese manual for Sonic CD. She reads tarot cards. <laughs> Which explains that she will meet Sonic at the Neverlake. But they also they also brought up her fortune telling in the hero comic that came with the packet the pack end comic. I think the they also bring that up in Sonic Battle, I believe. I think so. I believe that's also a reference to uh, Sonic Battle, but uh... that Sonic baffles me. <laughs> uh, here's, here's a question where I think this is more for TJ. Uh, do you have a Sonic OC? If so, why is it not Jimmy McJim? Uh, never up, nerd. No, <laughs> I've never come up with a Sonic OC, but mine would probably be a bear. Blood Sonic. Blood, blood have, Old Man Knuckles. Oh. <laughs> old Man Knuckles. <laughs> have we already answered this? Because I feel like I've said mine before. Blood Sonic. No, Azrus. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because uh, he's he's a robot. He's a robot version of Sonic that um, is tasked with bringing back the Saturday morning version of Robotnik. <laughs> and I got the name from a Lazarus sign, which was an old department store. And the L was the L was out, so I was like, Lazarus sounds cool. But Lazarus would have been okay because it has to do with resurrection. So So this this look now? Now I'm ashamed of you. Oh. Well I was like five, so That's actually even I worse. was like eight because it was Sonic. It was Richard. last week. It was last week. <laughs> I wrote it. I wrote it on the walls of crayon. <laughs> he called and came in and said, "Get out of my house! Get out of my house!" But but I pay for the heat, and they were like, "Get out of my house!" <laughs> um. So yeah, I think that's a lot of uh. Well, so yeah, that's been a Sonic says. Next time we come back, we will be uh doing the first arc of uh Sonic IDW. So look for that. Most likely beginning of May. We'll be back at this point. We're also currently at this point. Uh, I'm working behind the scenes to get a lot of our old stuff back online. Um, so you're most likely, li if you're listening to this, uh, the day this is released, it's on YouTube, or if this is in like a few months, possibly you downloaded it on your iPod device. I have no idea what you're trying to say to me. Oh, you had mentioned that you wanted to start a season two with... Yes, so, so... Our, next, our next episode will most likely be what... We're kind of dubbing season two, um, and when it when it comes out, you it, it'll be clear to see why we're calling it that. But because um, we're rebranding, you know, now. branding everything, we're gonna just talk about Doc and Doc now. So um, we may this is either the end, or maybe we'll have something come back in a little bit where we talk about the panel, which I had no idea what's going on today. So I've been FDA. I don't know. I've been TB. Uh... Good night. So, uh, as soon as we finished recording, we we were able to catch the last ten minutes or so of the panel live stream after we caught up with the live tweeting by uh, the stadium and TSSZ, and in a surprise, shocking, no one, nothing about the Freedom Fighters was even mentioned. What a waste of time. I hate my life and I'm going to unsubscribe from it. See you next week.